likely. Republican National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus is with us from the RNC headquarters in Washington. Good to see you, Chairman Priebus. We always like to have you on the hey, program. Hey, thank you. Good morning. I want to start with the violence, though. Why do you think this sure. violence is happening? Who do you think is responsible? And what do you think needs to be done to stop it? Well, I mean, I think there's plenty of blame to go around. I think party leaders on both sides need to denounce violence. I certainly have, and I don't think violence is the answer. I think violence begets violence. And so, you know, I think it always takes two to tango, but but obviously it needs to be denounced from all sides. Um, and so, but I also think the media is obsessed with it. I mean, you, you know, not necessarily you all at CBS, but other shows have this stuff on a constant loop. I mean, they, they find an altercation and they play it, and it's 24-7. They preempt everything else. Everyone's kicked off the air for hours and hours so that we can keep talking about, you know, a, a couple knuckleheads swinging at each other. So, you know, this is where we're at. Chairman Priebus, Mr. Trump has warned about riots if he's denied the nomination at the convention uh, in July in Cleveland. I mean, wh what do you think of a warning like that coming from a front runner? And are you doing anything to prepare for that possibility? Well, I, I guess I, I don't put it at the level of a warning to us, uh, but, you know, he obviously said yesterday he's not, he, he doesn't believe that, but never, nevertheless, the point is still a good, good question. We, we prepare for all contingencies. We will have over $50 million in security uh, at the convention. Uh, you know, it sounds like a lot, but... 24, 2,500 delegates is not that many people. Most state chairmen in this country have conventions that are even larger uh, than that. So we'll be prepared. It'll be fine. And, and I guarantee you we'll have a good time and it'll be a fun convention in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Chairman, we're talking about the tone and tenor of this campaign. I want to ask you about some sure. of the comments that the Republican frontrunner Donald Trump has made, specifically about Megyn Kelly, who is an anchor on the Fox News channel. Nine times in the past six days, he has tweeted specifically about Megyn Kelly, seven times calling her crazy. Fox News, as you know, has put out a statement saying, quote, Trump's extreme sick obsession with her is beneath the dignity of a presidential candidate who wants to occupy the highest office in the land. Would you agree that such personal attacks are deplorable? Well, I would agree that, you know, people running for office ought to focus in on the, uh, the positive, the, the, the message of the future, uh, putting, bringing all Americans together, uniting all of us. And I think sometimes uh, the daily grind of campaigns can get the best of everybody. Uh, but I also think that, you know, we all need to rise above these types of things. So, um, look, I, I think this is about fixing this country and getting people back to work, on track, tackling a debt bomb in this country that it's going to destroy Mr. us. Chairman? And so, look, Mr. Chairman, I always follow we press Reagan's Democrats. 11th commandment, which is... Mr. Chairman, we, we press Democrats and Republicans me? the same way to answer our questions on this show. And so sure. let me ask you specifically. Sure. Because I think this is serious. Sure. Calling another, a female yeah. journalist crazy, sick, and overrated. Is that presidential? Is that what the Republican Party stands for? Well, it's not a matter of whether it's presidential or not, because it's a word that we can all choose to define for ourselves. But it's not something I would do, and it's not something that I, I think we aspire to get engaged with. And so I think that we need to keep things at top level, keep things positive, talk about bringing America together and unifying this country. So is your job harder for you these days when you talk about <laughs> unifying the country? Listen, Lindsey Graham just said yesterday on Face the Nation, well, he'd rather lose without Donald Trump than win with him. So how do you get unity in the Republican Party? And about, do you find well, look, your job I mean, is harder for you these days? <laughs> well, don't confu confuse unity with unanimity. Uh, you know, you're never going to get unanimity. You're never going to get 100% of everyone on board. And clearly this has been uh, a contentious, drama-filled primary. I mean, I'm not actually trying to make pretend that it's not. But I also think that we have to put it in perspective. Look, the Democrats are having a, a rough uh, primary. Obviously, ours is probably a little bit more drama-filled. But the point is, is that we will come together because we will have a convention. We will unify. And that's where my job does get tougher because I need to get everyone back 
in the room and coming in the same direction following the convention. And so that's what we're working hard on every day. And we could have a nominee before Cleveland. We could have an open convention at Cleveland. So, look, we're in, we're in historic times, and I recognize that. But at the same time, when you take all of our candidates and put them head-to-head -head against Hillary Clinton, in most cases we're beating her, if not slightly behind. So, look, it's a wide-open race, and I don't think anyone can deny that. Okay, so you're saying you're enjoying the challenge of the job. <laughs> <laughs> you still got your hair, so that's I, you good. You're not pulling it out. All right. You know, I appreciate it. No, I'm, I am actually enjoying it. It's a great opportunity. I'm a front seat to history, and, yep. and, and I'm, I'm hoping, you know, every day to do my best and be yeah. open-minded and be patient. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Beavis, for joining us this morning. You uh, might be staring at your to-do list to start.